Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. Hey, tea sippers. So welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered. Thank you guys for joining me. And I have a special guest here with me today. Her name is Misty. And um, let me kind of give you guys a backstory. So I had a really dope Zoom meeting. I believe it was like Saturday or Sunday. And um, we talked about a lot of stuff. It got very emotional at different points. People sharing their stories and what they've been through. And Misty ended up being one of the last callers to call in that day. And her story about her culture and what was going on with them really moved a lot of people and it really moved me so i reached out to her and i was like i would love to have you on my podcast and she agreed so misty is here so say hey misty hello thank Uh, you for having me i'm so excited no and i really appreciate you for being here as well and um you are more than welcome like i was saying your story was very enlightening Um, Because you are Native American and you were speaking like on your culture and what kind of happened, you know, to the Native American culture and just what you guys have been through. Because we were talking about, you know, like the similarities to African culture and spirituality and things like that. And you made so many good points. And I know at that point we were talking about, you know, um, alcoholism and drinking and drinking in abundance and we're also talking about Meg Thee Stallion and you know other celebrities who kind of promote like that drinking lifestyle and anything goes and you got really spiritual with it and you were saying things about um because I talked about in prior uh videos about alcohol and spirits so if you want to just go ahead and talk about that for a bit um I just know I was you know growing up being told by our elders is, um, you know, the reason that they gave us the alcohol and the reservations after they decimated our way of life and, you know, told us to live their way on the reservations. They gave them alcohol, you know, especially returning back from the traumatized, being abused and stuff. Uh, it was like numbing medicine for them, you know? Mm. So, and we've had to deal with that for generations. It's been generations of alcoholism fighting alcoholism, uh, growing up, that inter, what is it, generational trauma. And so we were always told, you know, it, you're, the spirit world is real, you know, regardless of if you believe in it or not, whether you acknowledge it or not, it's real. And it applies to everybody. So if you're going to drink like that, you know, just know that it's called spirits for a reason. You know, you welcome, you dumb yourself down, you uh, lower your vibration. And it's like giving somebody else the the steering wheel to your body. You know, if you're a vehicle. No, that I, I think that's what our bodies are. It's a vehicle. Right. Our bodies, like we say, it's a temple. It's a vehicle. And you were saying something about your grandfather was telling you that when you drink, it takes several days for your spirit to come back into your body. Yeah. Um, it does. Uh, your spirit leaves your body um, all the time, even when, you, uh, when you're sleeping. You know, when you dream and stuff like that. But you're always in control. Like, even when you're angry, your spirit can uh, just not, you know, it can get out of your body. Not, like, all the, like, jump out and leave. But, like, you know, be next to it. Be kind of out. Be adjacent. You know what I mean? Just off balance. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's always spirits around. Because uh, we're in a spirit, we're, you know, at war. And they're always late. And they can't be on our, you know, real, they can't manifest here. You know, that's why it's called manifest. They need a man to, you know, materialize, manifest. Mm. They have to come into us to operate that way. And so when we're operating in spirits, you know, even though it's us, we're operating in the spirit of fear, you know, or the spirit of anger. But then when you're an alcoholic, you open yourself up to, like, you know, the Jezebel spirit or, like, you know, real-time demons, you know, real-time uh, ones that don't let you go. You welcome those things into your life, you know. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. And that was one of the things that we were saying that, you know, it's okay to drink. It's okay to have a good time. It's okay to, you know, kick it with your friends. You know, nobody's saying that you shouldn't, but you should be aware of things that you're opening yourself to and that you should be very aware that, you know, not to drink to a limit where you're blacking out 
where you're fainting, you know, and that's like a famous rap verse in Hot Boys, you know, drink till I faint, you know, and it's like in this culture, everything is about excess and going overboard. And I think sometimes people need to understand that it's okay to, you know, pull back a bit. It's okay to have fun and be sober or have dry fun. You don't always need a drink. And I think so many, you know, young people are being conditioned that they always have to be high, drunk, popping a pill, drinking lean. And a lot of this stuff not only affects you physically, as far as like, you know, aging you, you know, can deteriorate your liver, your insides, but also spiritually. And that's what a lot of people are scared to talk about. It's a really complicated, like, issue because music culture hip hop culture it goes over every all of us everybody in america you know every trend comes from black people really and we were seeing all that that's that's how and everything that they take is from other cultures because they they america has no real culture its culture is stealing cultures because it's a colonialism mm-hmm. they're literally what we're experiencing now is the result of colonialism. This is what colonialism does. It, it steals people from their real culture, from their real way of life, and feeds them basically death. And that's what, I mean, it is okay to drink and have fun, but I mean, you still have to be aware that where we are, you know, we're, who was it? John Trudell said, you know, you need to be aware, um, protect your spirit because you're in the place where spirits get eaten. And, mm-hmm. You know, that's real. That's real talk. So, yeah, have fun and stuff. But also, why do we need to drink to have fun? Why do we need to smoke and to have fun? You know? Um, culture saves lives. There's there's different ways of, you know, what happened to block parties? You hardly ever see those anymore. What happened to, you know, just this community? You know, how tight-knit communities were. Mm-hmm. And all the functions we had together. You know, you don't really see that anymore. Everything's online. Everything's about showing out and showing what you got instead of like where we are, you know, who we're with, what right. we've accomplished. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a whole different vibe because our culture really is gone. Our culture is about taking. We've adopted the colonialist mindset. Yeah, and it's you really know, like, decimated uh, it, Native American culture specifically. You know, and that's very interesting when you say that America really has no culture. They don't. They take from African culture. They take from Native American culture. They take from, you know, even European culture, and they kind of mish it together. And I know that was one thing we were discussing um, is because somebody had called in and they were saying that, you know, it's very interesting how they're so quick to demonize African spirituality for years. You know, voodoo is bad and, you know, African spirituality, oh, that's devil worship. They, they demonized it until there was money to be made. And now we see it being Uh commodified, you know, so mermaids don't exist, even though we talk about water spirits that's big in African spirituality, that's big in African culture. And so they'll they'll dismiss mermaids the way we see them in African culture. They're not beautiful creatures. They're very creepy and they will pull you under and drown you and, and take over your spirit. Right. And so but. They have no problem commodifying it to make the Little Mermaid and the Little Mermaid on ice. Um, Voodoo is horrible and it's bad and it's, you know, it's evil until they need to make movies like Princess and the Frog. And then they have Voodoo in there. Yeah, and then they make it cute and they package it in their way so they can profit off it. Because they're a colonialist. Naturally, I mean, it's a colonialist system. So it was illegal to the damn near 80s. I was going to say that. Um, So almost to the 80s for us to even smudge. And now what is the, the big trend is smudging. And, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, like, uh, cleansing with incense or burning herbs, that, that's always been around. And sage has, is salvia, uh, from the salvia family. So there's like thousands of different, and there's been lots of cultures all over Africa, Europe or whatever, but smudging with white sage is specifically Plains Native, our culture, Mm -hmm. specifically. And the relationship, the whole, you have, I mean, growing the plant, gathering the plant, you have to pray with, there's a whole, there's a whole, you know, that's part of our culture. You know what I mean? And to see that come out, like, it was illegal for us, and we're just now being able to do that. You said it was illegal in your culture at one point? It was illegal until the 80s. Mm. And then now, what was that? That's only, you know, that's not even 50 years ago, right? Right. And then now, all of a sudden, it's being sold on the shelves again, and then our white sage is being decimated and bought, and now we can't, and now we can't have it. So you guys are not even benefiting you know? from the sage plant. 
and the no, growing and the harvesting. No, and we and it's against if you ever have to buy sage, it's bad medicine. You're never supposed to buy sage. You're never supposed to sell sage. That's mm. why we are so and then and not to mention our dream catchers, not to mention mascots, you know. Mm-hmm. We everybody, you know, we were demonized for for years for scalping people when we never started that. That was an, an act enacted by the government where they put bounties on their heads. That's why they talk about, you know, you have a number on your head, you got a price on your head. They're referring to the time where the government enacted in the 1800s to like 1920s to where they uh, paid people to scalp little uh, kids, women and men, and they paid them almost a year's wage for our hair. And But we became known for scalping. You know what I mean? They, they can do that. They can, they can, you know, they can take what they want and, and put it in, in front of other people, like, however they want, because they, they get to tell the stories, you know? And so we get to sit in the background and kind of just watch it all happen. Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.